And here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a comparison between the brand new Sony a7C on the right and the a6500 on the left. Now these are two very different cameras. We've got a full frame camera on the right, whereas on the left we have an APS-C camera. But what they do share in common, other than the fact that they both, of course, are Sony interchangeable lens mirrorless cameras, is their form factor. And that's part of the beauty of the brand new a7C. It was Sony's attempt to get uh, full frame uh, performance and essentially all of the nuance and niceties of their latest and greatest tech into a body that is, of course, more APS-C centric. And when you look at these two cameras, you can see that they really aren't that much different in terms of form factor. Yes, the a7C is a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier, but it also does have a new battery type. Uh, in this comparison, the best uh, I would have hoped to have offered all of you was really to compare the a7C directly to the a6600, but since I don't have it here, I can only do that in spirit. I mean, I have reviewed the 6600, so through the course of this video, I will be talking about that, but really this focuses on if you're considering APS-C versus full frame, now that we have a camera like the a7C, I believe you should go all in and get the a7C. The reason I say that is because, yes, it's expensive at roughly 1800 US, whereas, you know, the a6500 now is, I think it's around 1000 US dollars, uh, plus or minus. Uh, of course, the a6600, I believe, is still a little under 1400. And if I was going to pick an APS-C camera right now, it would be the a6600. But the fact that they're so close in form, form factor, not that far apart in terms of price, of course, getting the brand new offering that is full frame has the benefit of the fully articulating flip out LCD screen, uh, getting the benefit of having the full frame sensor, even if you were to never use a full frame piece of glass. And I say that because again, if I'm truly comparing uh, the a7C to its APS-C counterparts from Sony, uh, let's say you already have an A6500 or 6600 or 6400 or 6300, you know, it goes on. You probably already have APS-C glass, kind of like this little uh, ultra wide angle zoom lens, which was one of my first favorites in the APS-C lineup. Uh, expensive at its original retail, it still sits at, I think, 900 retail, but often on sale for eight. And it produces amazing results. And look at how small this F4 piece of glass is. But that's because it is designed for APS-C use. Now it does, oddly enough, function in the full frame world, but with a very limited window in that 10 to uh, 18 range. But when we talk about using wide angles on the A7C, that's where all of a sudden we are reminded full frame is going to require full frame glass. Now, uh, I say this because Yes, an APS-C lens, not just this one, but any you might have, can be adapted to this camera. It will natively mount, it will shoot in a cropped mode, so you will not get uh, the full benefits of the sensor. And those lenses will work, you'll still get great images. I know, I've tested it. The a7C is a little gem. It isn't the best camera on the market, but if you're looking for the best performing camera in its form factor, and I would add at its price point, really checking all of those boxes, then it's probably the right camera for you. But part of the reason it was introduced with this new kit lens, which is a zoom uh, lens, and I'm not really impressed by the zoom lens, but what I am impressed by is its size because it's 28 to 60 millimeters, which is an odd uh, range to begin with. But keep in mind, look at how compact they kept this lens. I mean, it's smaller, almost the same size as uh, the 10 to 18 f4. Of course, this is not full frame, but this is. So it's really bonkers that uh, Sony was able to make a full frame piece of glass that is this small. But I'm not shocked because they already have several full frame lenses, even some primes in the older stable from the very beginning of full frame uh, E-mount cameras that were fairly small. But if you're going to use their current glass that exists, uh, then you're looking at something like this. You want a wide angle zoom option that's comparable to the F4 10 to 18, you see the size difference. And so this is where I really br bring us to that 
question of do you want to have really large lenses on an a7c and that's where even for me it presents a little bit of an issue because the beauty of the APS-C lineup was that you could keep glass basically you know in proportion to the body now we've got a camera that has miniaturized the full frame experience 4k 30 real-time tracking amazing autofocus performance essentially that of the a7 mark III full frame uh, sibling but with real-time tracking that it doesn't is is not as it's not available so it's pre prevalent in terms of the amount of features you're going to get here with the a7c uh, you also of course as i mentioned have the new flip out uh, display which is another nicety the relocation of the video record button which on APS-C bodies was relegated to the thumb grip for oh so long too long uh, and the at the end of the day you're going to need to really put on large lenses because let's say you don't consider this to be up to snuff which is the f4 Zeiss 16 to 35 full frame well then you're looking at something like a G Master this is the 24 to 70 and it's not that much bigger but we're getting even larger so the point is is what do you expect what is your takeaway from the full frame experience I look at it that if you're in the market right now for APS-C and that fits your budget the A65, 66, 6400 those are all great options but if you can afford to take a step into the A7C as opposed to these older uh, APS-C cameras the A7C is worth every dollar because as I've mentioned you can shoot all of those smaller lenses Sony has promised to launch more uh, lenses specifically for this new form factor uh, that they've put out so that's promising as well but you know I don't expect to see true development a full fleshing out of the lens lineup if you will for quite some time so this is an early adopter camera it also isn't if you're willing to work with the bigger lenses so that's that's a real big difference but when it comes to stabilization both have five axis in body stabilization and then if you're shooting with a lens that is optical steady shot that is yet another benefit but this also has active steady shot and that is something you will not find in the 6500 you will find it in the 6600 and that is really good if you're looking to not achieve gimbal like stabilization but at least get closer to run and gun stabilization that isn't going to make someone want to throw up because you know the five axis stabilization is better than nothing uh, it's not game changing but the active steady shot does bump us up into a tier where now all of a sudden handheld footage in many instances depending on operator I'll say error or success could make something look like it was truly on a gimbal now if you're going to just run around and you know be haphazard even active steady shot can't correct that sort of incompetence so it's something to be aware of but ultimately uh, the build quality uh, the dynamic range afforded by the sensor uh, the video quality in general because of also updated processing uh, hardware even though this is another uh, Bion's X uh, series processor with the a7c you are getting new hardware so the I autofocus the real-time tracking that I've mentioned it's all going to be better than any camera before it so when people say well it's just an a7 III no it's not it has new hardware that the a7 III doesn't and in essence that by itself makes it better than the a7 III now if you have really large hands then both of these cameras really shouldn't be on your short list to begin with so at the end of the day it really comes down to budget in my opinion uh, if you know that you don't want to spend uh, a lot of money then APS-C is still the way to go because bang for buck is king in the APS-C realm and I'm not saying that that makes the A6600 a good value but the, AP, uh, the APS-C lineup until the A6600 was stuck with a W series battery which I don't even have inside this camera right now uh, that really was fairly limited on battery life the beauty of the transition to the a6600 and now with the a7c is that we do have the z-type battery that was introduced with the a7r3 and that is a hell of a difference when it comes to shooting it means carrying less batteries yes they are more expensive but they're higher quality 
uh, you're going to get better uh, overall performance. It's night and day. I mean, it's roughly nearly four times the battery life of what you would get in W series with APS-C cameras. Now, as I mentioned, the A6600 is the one exception in Sony's APS-C lineup that does have that benefit. Uh, something else I'll point out here uh, that doesn't exist on the A7C is we do have a flash. But, you know, how important is having that flash? I mean, anyone who is shooting uh, at the level where they're ready to drop 1800 on a body, as opposed to a little over a thousand, when this retailed, it was a little over a grand. I think it was 1200, I believe, if memory serves, back in 2017. Uh, now, you know, a thousand or less. Uh, they're not really operating in the same sphere in terms of who Sony thinks it's going to appeal to. And then if you do want to mount uh, a flash, you obviously can. Uh, you can mount a microphone, a lot of options, a lot of versatility. Um, you know, it's just, it's a different animal. So uh, even the weather sealing system is completely different. And that's the beauty of the A7C is that it's not just that they shrunk down a full frame camera into an APS-C type body, which they most definitely did, uh, but you're getting all of the current technical and hardware upgrades that really only exist in new models and is true of anything that's new and anything technologically related. Uh, so, uh, the, you know, some people look at this camera as corners cut in order to achieve its form factor, and there is some truth to that. I mean, for example, the EVF here very similar to the EVF here. And at 1800, I would have liked a better EVF than what is on a much less expensive camera. But this is Sony's first step in delivering a full frame interchangeable lens camera in this form factor. And we have to take that with a grain of salt. I look at this as more of a very bright future for what Sony's doing with full frame, which is a return to where things be began in APS-C, which is give us as little compromise as possible uh, in the smallest form factor you can. And, you know, really all began with that NEX7, if you can remember that far back, to 2012, which was an amazing little camera, only had contrast, uh, autofocus, oh, the good old days. And now, of course, of course, both of these have hybrid systems, but the system that lives in here is just night and day. I mean, you would never, if you could time travel back, you would have never thought that Sony would all of a sudden become king of autofocus with their A9 series, but they have. And of course, the A7C, much like the A7R4, and of course, the A7S uh, Mark III are all sort of offspring of that amazing autofocus capability. So while many Sony cameras can claim to have eye autofocus and real-time tracking, I assure you, the best performance is gonna come from their latest models because they benefit from, again, the latest hardware, this camera being no exception. So from a handling perspective, I've already covered it. If you're trying to keep things light, remember, uh, unless you're waiting on Sony to make more of their new gen lenses designed, it, designed it, listen to me, it's late, uh, designed for the A7C, uh, you're gonna have to work with either APS-C crop lenses or full frame glass that is gonna make this not unstable, but a lot less ergonomically pleasing than a regular APS-C alternative. And also when it comes to weight, um, even though these two look very similar in terms of form factor, I can assure you the A7C is much heavier. Is it a world of difference? No, but it's absolutely um, at another level. Uh, I mean, you can just, you see the bottom, you, you just see the chassis, how thick it is. now. When it comes to video, another thing I want to point out is that, uh, and I'll refer to the A6600 here rather than the 65, because it is really the more current. The A6600 uh, is not free of overheating issues uh, like all of Sony's uh, current cameras. I'm speaking specifically to video usage, although it's possible even with still. I've had my moments out in the desert. Uh, Masada was one good example where my A7R III took a crap and that was in mixed use, so it wasn't because I was shooting a feature film, uh, but conditions can do that to any manufacturer's camera, but when it comes to these two, again, I'm gonna pretend this is the A6600, the A7C is gonna be far better at managing the heat than the A6600. Is it going to be a world of difference? No, and if I had to pick between the two, I would pick this camera every time over the A6600, especially because they are so close in price. Uh, 
Um, some people think Sony's doing a little bit a little bit of cannibalization, cannibalizing their own product line. I don't think so. I think they're giving us more options, and a world with more options is inherently a good thing unless, you know, you just don't like making decisions, I guess. Um, and that's part of what I'm here to help all of you with is that, you know, I provide you with my opinion, and I still think there is a space for APS-C. I hope that Sony's not abandoning it, but a camera like the A7C certainly makes the argument for abandoning it because all of a sudden you've got all of the capability of full frame in a body that's only slightly larger and heavier than an APS-C body. And granted, by the way, the A6600 is bigger than the A65 because it does have uh, the Z-Type uh, series battery, as I mentioned earlier in this video. So these are just all things to be aware of. Uh, if I you know, take off, I'll do this now just to, to give you a taste again, just to see it. And unfortunately, I actually just sold my this A6500. It's going to be going to hopefully a good family. Um, I like to see my gear go to uh, people that are going to get uh, enjoyment, love out of uh, their hobby, profession, whatever it may be. So this was a package I always loved because, I mean, how else do you get uh, a really high quality DI tool like this with a 10 to 18 millimeter range at f4 that could fit in your palm? Now, of course, if I want to throw the wide angle, uh, native wide angle, so that we have true full frame action on the a7C, and I'll stick with this rather than the G Master because I really don't feel that people that are buying the A7C, and I could be completely wrong, need to jump to full frame. I just don't, uh, not full frame, excuse me, G Master. Because if you're really after G Master glass, I recommend that you, you know, invest in a better body before you invest in the glass. Glass will always maintain its value, hopefully, if it's good glass. But, uh, you know, Putting a G Master on a $1,700 body, it doesn't rub me the wrong way, but it kind of, you know, if it's your first, you know, full frame camera or it's the first time that you're upgrading from APS C, there's nothing wrong with starting at these Zeiss uh, F4 lenses and a lot of the G Series glass. Uh, you know, one of my favorite pieces of glass, in fact, I think one of most people's uh, favorite full frame Sony pieces is, of course, the heralded uh, F4 24 to 105 with optical steady shot. And I think this is an amazing lens. But again, to stick it on the A7C, the balance isn't too bad. I mean, it's not terrible, but you know, I was just showing you how easily this is palmed, right? And I even remember the days when I was shooting this on lesser models than the 6500, and I could actually fit it in a cargo pocket. You know, I had two cameras uh, around my neck, uh, and then I had this little wide angle in my cargo pocket for those wide angle shots that I couldn't afford with my longer lenses and primes. Uh, of course, that's gonna be going away with this, but now I'm holding basically almost the same capability and you see the difference. I mean, it does still fit in my hand, but you know, there's no way this is making it into a cargo pocket uh, unless Sony wows us and produces a little, uh, you know, wide angle zoom, ultra wide, in this form factor. Now this lens has not blown me away. It's a, it's, you know, it's a kit piece of glass, so I don't expect it to. Just like the kit lens I had here, which is where we started the comparison, the power zoom, uh, 16 to, what is it again, 50, is, you know, a better than nothing lens. So I used this only for underwater photography because my underwater housing for the 6500 could only support that little pancake lens. That's another thing where I see the A7C being an advantage. So going forward, if I were to purchase one of these, which right now it doesn't look like I will, it's just not something I need. If I didn't have the cameras that I do have, then it would be on my short list, no question. You know, you think about having that, you know, this lens in particular on here, which again, optically is not a gem, but for an underwater solution to be able to throw this in an enclosure and have a full frame camera with zoom capability, granted it would not be power zoom, uh, but if you have an Ike light or, you know, one of those higher end pro grade uh, underwater enclosures, having this sort of capability in an underwater 
environment is amazing. I mean, I was really impressed as an amateur, a hobbyist, the first time I got to shoot APS-C underwater. So you all have to know that the idea of shooting full frame with full frame glass um, is just something I aspire to one day uh, when the pandemic is not cock blocking. But we're not there yet. Uh, but again, this all comes back to, is it worth the difference? Well, I've answered that question. In my opinion, in every way, the full frame offering is worth uh, the extra money. However, as I said, if budget is your primary uh, driver, you're not going to be unhappy with the APS-C uh, lineup of cameras. Basically, the A63, 4, 5, or 6600. Autofocus is very good on all of them. Of course, it's different from model to model. 6400 is where we finally got real-time tracking uh, for video. That's a big deal. Don't kid yourself. If you don't shoot video, you may not care. The eye autofocus integration was a game changer. Uh, so uh, the APS-C lineup still has very good legs, but if you're paying retail right now, and this was the 6600, and we're talking about 1400 US versus 1800, I would absolutely every single time tell you spend the extra 400, get the A7C, get their latest and greatest, and even though the ergonomics aren't going to be the best in town, you will have a better camera overall. And if you do decide to get, you know, expensive larger lenses over time, so be it. It'll happen. You know, then you can start mounting bigger glass on there. And even though the balance won't be particularly amazing, you're not going to be upset at night. You're not going to be saying, oh, why did I do this? In fact, you'll be very happy that you actually have a body that can take advantage of high-end glass rather than one that is relegated to APS-C only. So again, from a handling perspective, I prefer the APS-C models. Uh, they're light. You won't get back strain if you're traveling, if you're even doing professional uh, shooting. Of course, that depends on what kind. Uh, APS-C rewards you. And now so does the A7C. But once I start throwing on the lenses I love, the A7C does start to feel awkward. And that's just a fact of life of making a full frame camera so small. Now, bear in mind, uh, when it comes to I.O., this camera's rich, so is the A6600, which is what I really would like to be comparing this directly to, as I've said over and over again. Um, but at the end of the day, no matter how much I could slice, dice, and go through the specifications, uh, I would take full frame every single time now that we have it in a body that doesn't look like this. You know, move over, see if I can get them all in frame, but it's like you have the evolution there. And this is, in, this is the A7R Mark II, a body circa 2015, but you see the size difference. And of course, this is the only one that has the flip-out LCD. Of course, I love the EVF here, kind of hate the EVF here just because I'm left-eye dominant and look at its location. Uh, but beyond that, when it comes to autofocus, this is the best camera on this table. This has the highest resolution, raw resolution from its full frame uh, sensor because it, it is part of the R series. But when it comes to these three cameras, this is the best camera on deck right now. It will outperform both of these easily. Uh, so the A7C is a game changer, in my opinion. Uh, and if you're considering whether or not you should you know, make a fresh purchase in APS-C Sony or full frame Sony, if budget isn't an issue, jump on that A7C. Your back will thank you. This isn't about how strong your arms are. Anyone who's a, a real photographer, and by real, I don't mean professional. I mean passion, love, shoots on a regular basis. Your back, your shoulders, your arms will thank you. It doesn't matter how much time you spend in the gym. We're just not meant to be holding devices like this all day long. And then throw on lenses like, you know, these guys. One of my favorites right here, or... Another one of my favorites right here. And again, your back is going to be like, what the actual, why, what did I do to you? So the A7C does mitigate some of that, but as I've mentioned over and over, in an unbalanced fashion. But when it comes to autofocus, video capability, stabilization, the flip out display, the form factor, the battery life, uh, the ability to toggle off uh, the overheating thresholds, the A7C really does deliver. It doesn't give you what the A7R4 or the A7S3 does, but it does give you 
the best of everything else in the smallest body that Sony has ever made, full frame and interchangeable. The only camera that could really beat this is an RX1 Mark III, which let's hope Sony decides to bless us with at some point. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.